Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we're continuing work on our Phasmophobia Cross Minute mashup. Now, last time we added a bunch of tools slash features to the game, including a UV flashlight and fingerprints, the strong flashlight with accompanying larger beam of light, and ghost quirks, which would keep track of things like ghosts being able to leave behind salty footprints. It was a lot of build-up that brought us into the final stretch of this project, signified by the addition of the longly anticipated Death Clock. And that journey to the end continues with today's plan. We'll start with the addition of environmental objects the player can push around. Next, we'll focus on a few tweaks and changes to existing code. And finally, we'll begin the long and arduous task of applying evidence mechanics to only work with their respective ghost types. And that sounds like a tall order, so let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First up was the creation of our movable environmental objects, which would pretty much work exactly like the Bone and Voodoo dolls. These environmental objects are being added for two reasons. The first is because ghost types specifically deal with interactable world objects. And second, it helps populate our randomly generated world with something other than the player and the ghost. And as you may have already noticed, these objects are indeed items found in both Minute and Minute Fun Racer. Other notable changes include a strong flashlight beam, which is actually useful, and the inclusion of room lighting. For now, each room is randomly given the chance to be lit or not, because again, a ghost deems it to be a thing. We will not be implementing the light control this session, but just in case anyone was curious as to the inconsistencies in darkness, there you go. Speaking of changes, let's fast forward a bit to later on in the session. The quote-unquote quirk system I began implementing last time was removed. Instead, a ghost class check is made. If the ghost is not a wraith, then the salting system would play out like normal. The same went for fingerprints, which required a heavier dose of class checks, but ultimately worked the exact same way. And that's it for changes, so let's rewind and cover the rest of the additions. Starting with the spirit class, each ghost would have its evidence limited to, well, their class. So smudge sticks would only be twice as powerful if the ghost is a spirit. And again, the same was done for fingerprints and salt. And basically, the rest of this session was to check my notes, copy out classes who apply to a piece of evidence, go to that tool's code, and add a check for said classes. It was a very tedious and repetitive back and forth, and yes, this would have been much less work had the check been turned into a function. However, I haven't had the best luck with optional arguments in 2.3, so for now I kept things simple. Anyway, believe it or not, this took up majority of the time I had for this session, and I didn't even get to all the classes. The results aren't very different from what we've experienced before. The only major difference now is certain evidence only returns positive responses based on the right classes, which is exactly what we're after, but it doesn't make for very compelling visual let's dev content. In fact, I may just do the remaining checks off video, that way we can focus on other aspects of the ghost next time, such as their unique behaviors. So yeah, with that said, next video should be much better for visual content. For now, however, this brings us to the end of today's episode of Let's Delve. So remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and leave your thoughts on our progress in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.